Hello everyone, I decided to try something new on my channel and do a platinum review for Last of Us Part 2. In this video I will talk about the roadmap, the trophy list and my personal experience playing and completing the game, which hopefully will give you enough information to decide for yourself if you want to play and complete it for the platinum trophy. Keep in mind, this is not a trophy guide, as I will not give you instructions for every single trophy and collectible in the game, and also this is not a game review, so I will not be talking about story and spoilers. One thing I want to acknowledge first is this game is very controversial because of its story choices, so I personally loved it, but your mileage may vary. The most important thing for you to know is if you are even gonna enjoy the gameplay itself, because if you don't enjoy playing the game, your platinum journey will feel like a chore, which is not what it's all about. If you played the first game and enjoyed its mechanics, you are going to love this one. Every single gameplay element was refined and done better than any previous game. The stealth is fun and challenging on the higher difficulties and melee fights are brutal. If you didn't play the first game, I would recommend doing that before starting this one, because it's a masterpiece and will give you more context for the story. But it's not required as you will be filled in on the story in the beginning of part 2. Now let's go over the roadmap. It will take you around 30 hours and about 2 playthroughs to complete. I say about 2 playthroughs because completing New Game Plus is not actually required for the Platinum Trophy this time around, but you will need to do some of it anyway, because you need to fully upgrade yourself and all your weapons in order to complete the Platinum. Now, how much of the second playthrough you'll need to do is kinda depends on you and how thorough have you been on your first playthrough, but the bare minimum is about 75% anyway and I will talk about it later. The difficulty for the game is 3 out of 10, which comes from needing to complete the game basically twice and find all the collectibles. As for collectibles themselves, you will probably need to use a guide to find some of them. But don't let it discourage you, the collectibles carry over to New Game Plus and you can easily clean them up with Chapter Select. Also Naughty Dog implemented a very handy system which will tell you how many collectibles you are missing in each chapter. There are no difficulty related trophies in the base game, so you can play on any difficulty you feel comfortable, although I would probably recommend you to have your first playthrough to be on either hard or survivor difficulty, because that's when the game really shines. On those difficulties the game is not a third person shooter anymore and you can't just run around while shooting everyone along the way because you'll die very quickly and you won't have enough bullets to do it anyway, which forces you to be a lot more creative. For those of you who want to go for 100%, you will have to finish the game on the highest difficulty, rounded, but I will talk about it after I'm done talking about the base game. Now let's go over the trophy list itself. There are a couple of trophies that are for partial completion of requirements for another trophy, so I will be skipping those. The first trophy, all I had to do, is for simply completing the story, so that's pretty straightforward. The next two trophies are basically the reason why you need a second playthrough. Survival Expert is for fully upgrading yourself with supplements. Supplements is something you will find while scavenging and they look like pills. They are mostly hidden in bathrooms and drawers of houses you go through and are rarely hidden too much. You should try to scavenge as much as you can though throughout the game because you will need a lot of them and the length of the second playthrough kinda depends on it. Another thing to keep in mind is that you need to find all the training manuals in the game to unlock every upgrade path, so keep an eye out for them. Also there's a trophy for finding them all, so that is nice. I personally finished all my upgrades on my second playthrough near the end because I wasn't very good in finding supplements, so you don't need to worry if you miss a couple, there's more than enough in two playthroughs to fully upgrade yourself. The second trophy that requires you to do a new game plus is Arms Master. This one requires you to fully upgrade all your weapons, to do so you'll need to find parts. Parts usually look like tools or gears, and you can use them to upgrade your weapons on one of the 25 workbenches in the game. And by the way, there's a trophy for fighting all the workbenches as well. But they're usually not very well hidden, and you can clean them up with chapter select if you missed any. Keep in mind, you actually need to interact with the workbench for it to count. So try to find as much parts as you possibly can, but you shouldn't worry if you missed a couple. I personally unlocked this trophy around the mid-section of my second playthrough. Another obvious requirement that comes with the trophy is that you need to find all the guns in order to be able to upgrade them. I got this one naturally, it's called High Caliber. The weapons are mostly in plain sight, so just make sure you pick them up. Now we reach the collectibles part in a trophy list. Archivist is a trophy for finding all the artifacts and journal entries. Artifacts are basically letters and notes you find in the world. I actually really enjoyed collecting them and reading them because they give you more world building information, so that was a lot of fun for me. 
Journal entry is when you reach a specific location and you have an option to press triangle and write something in your notebook. You will probably find most of the documents in journal entries naturally and only miss a couple. When playing myself, I was missing only a small amount of them and just used the guide on my second playthrough. Master set is a trophy for fighting all the trading cards, which is another type of collectible. This one I found a little bit more boring because it feels like another generic collectible. They are usually hidden much better and you will definitely need a guide for this one. Again, as with every collectible, I urge you not to ruin your experience and use a guide on your second playthrough. Numismatist is another generic collectible in this game. You will start fighting coins after a midpoint of the game. Same as with cards, they are really well hidden and you will need to guide to find them. Something that is actually really useful to find along the way are safes. There are 14 saves in the game and they usually contain useful resources, so you should be on the lookout for them. In order to open them, you will need to find a note nearby that will tell you the combination or give you a hint. If you can't find it or figure it out, keep in mind that you can always google it, since the combinations are the same for everyone. After unlocking all the safe, you will get the safe tracker trophy. In my playthrough, I was making an active effort to find them all, because they will mostly give you good loot that you will need on the higher difficulties, since on the higher difficulties, resources are really limited. Now in Naughty Dog's fashion, there are two easter eggs that are hidden for Uncharted and Jack and Dexter series. Finding each one of them will award you with trophy. Sightseer is a trophy for visiting every location in downtown Seattle, which is a pretty big open world area in the beginning of the game. You will have a map and as you explore points of interest will be marked as question marks on the map. You will need to fully explore all 10 of them and for Ellie to cross them off the map. This one is actually really cool as you will be rewarded with additional dialogue and one of my favorite cutscenes of the game for doing that. I got this one naturally because I like to explore all the map when I can. There's also a trophy for crafting every item in the game, which you will probably get a little after the midpoint. This one also came naturally to me, so I wouldn't stress too much about it. There are three other miscellaneous trophies in the game, one for putting a hat on your NPC companion in the museum, winning a marksmanship competition with the gun range, and earning a high score in an archery minigame. Those trophies are semi-story related, so I won't talk too much about them, I urge you to check a guide for them only if you didn't get them naturally throughout your first playthrough and not ruin your experience. Regardless, they are pretty easy to do in chapter select if you miss them. So this is basically all you need to do to earn a platinum trophy in this game. Now the big question is, should you actually go ahead and do it? And my answer would be that if you enjoyed the gameplay, you probably should. None of the trophies are hard or missable. So even if you're a beginning trophy hunter or never actually earned a platinum before in your life, you should be able to pull this off. Even the collectibles are enjoyable enough because they give you uh, enough world building and reward you with additional dialogue by finding them. So that actually didn't even feel like a chore to me. That being said, you should keep in mind that the story is really depressing and you might want to take a break before going for the second playthrough. Something about me, this game actually was my first ever Platinum, so it holds a very special place for me and I did manage to get most of the trophies naturally without looking up the guide. Now like I promised earlier, I will talk a little bit about Grounded Mode DLC and what's it about. Grounded difficulty is not easy, you die in just a few hits, you don't have a HUD, you don't have a listening mode, resources are almost non-existent. I would say that difficulty wise it's on par with the first game Grounded Mode. Now that being said, the difference from the previous game is the checkpoints are still the same, so you can try over and over again without being worried about losing too much progress. I encourage you to try to be conservative with resources and keep them for the areas you know you'll need them. For that reason I would probably recommend not doing grounded mode on the first playthrough, although it's entirely doable. Keep in mind you can skip most of the encounters by just sneaking by the enemies and running away from them if you get spotted. Really good method in dealing with infected is running around, stunning them with bottles and finishing them up with melee, method I used a lot in my own playthrough. There are a couple of difficulty spikes throughout the game, but with enough tries you can beat them eventually. If you are really struggling with a particular section, there is a workaround that allows you to enable cheats in grounded mode without voiding the trophy. Although I would recommend to play it legitimately, you can use it and I will provide a link to the guide on how to do it in the description below. Another mode that Grounded DLC introduced is permadeath mode. 
Now that might sound daunting at first, but it's not as bad as it sounds. You can choose to play it on an easiest difficulty and with permadeath per chapter, that way if you die, you'll just restart the chapter and not the whole game. This is actually the way I played it and I still managed to actually fail twice, once by dying to fall damage because I missed a jump and the second time by messing up a chase sequence. Both of those mistakes made me lose now about an hour of progress together, but other than that, that was a smooth ride for me. If you wish to minimize the amount of playthroughs required, you can start by doing the first playthrough on Grounded and second playthrough on Permadeath. That way you can achieve 100% in just two playthroughs. Alternatively, you can do Grounded mode on the third playthrough, which is probably what I would recommend. So this is it. I really hope I helped at least some of you to reach a decision about going for a Platinum or 100% in this game. Feel free to leave a suggestion about other games you think I should review in this format. Thank you for watching and have a good one.